there are a couple of things I want to hit here that that you talked about that are powerful points to address. So when you talk about the left brain, I know from the work that it comes from that's basically the brain, the left brain producing that type of self-sabotage comes from the adaptations that went through in childhood, basically the programming. And then we develop these habits from childhood based on that. Here's the thing that I've been thinking about through throughout everything you've been sharing is I fully support it. I'm down for it. And I, as you've seen, I love this journey, but I'm also witnessing there are many systems in, in place that are guarding the old ways. I'm talking about the school systems, government systems, parenting systems, business systems, even bosses, managers, mm -hmm. a lot of people in authority that control people and systems, right? And even how you get to success in life financially, how you get to success in career, how you get to success in love and relationships that influence and educate and program a lot and control even like the fact that everything stays that way, a lot of the population so that people grow into denial mechanisms, right? It, it, this is where a lot of phrases, no matter in which of those fields I'm talking about, they show up like, suck it up, right? Or it's supposed to be hard, right? Or uh, if it's meant to be, it'll, it'll just be like all these sort of phrases show up supporting these systems. It's just the way it is. Right, I could keep going on and on with these phrases. What what do you see around that that your book can contribute to in a positive way? Because um, the way I see it is, uh, there's a resistance of from those systems that have a strong influence on how we operate as a society and civilization. In my eyes, needs a wake up call. It needs your book. It needs to read it. Yeah. But what do you think about? How do you think that's going to play out? What's your prediction? when it comes to this. Here's part of the response. The internet's role in creating self-deception and the detachment from the authentic self, the internet's role in creating self-deception deception and the destruction of relationships, the internet's role in creating self-deception and the destruction of media, the internet's role in creating detached parenting, the successful intelligent person's self-deception and detachment from themselves, how science and medicine create self-deception and the detachment from the self. In other words, you're dead right. Um, I Again, I show very, to me, at least very convincingly, that the most successful are the most deceived because they run all of that. It's called the intelligence paradox. And this has been proven that the so-called smartest people on the planet, the most intelligent, they are the ones that run industry. Every All the industries that you set. All right. Unfortunately, while they may have the highest IQ, they have the lowest common sense. And that's and so because they're so smart, they get bored. And so they create all of these destructive processes and frivolous ideas and concepts that are massively destructive to everyone on the planet because they lack common sense. And that's not a dis that's just fact. Like what is common proven. sense to you? What's that? Well, the common sense would be it's obvious that all of these processes aren't working, but that's the left hemisphere. It, when given proof that it doesn't work, that its line of thinking is wrong, it, it sees that, that proof of its falseness as proof to keep going, to, to actually double down and go even further in that direction. That's how the left, the left hemisphere is a denial making monster. And it is what the intelligent people are caught in because they've been conditioned to stay away from emotion. The way our brain works is everything comes into the right hemisphere. It, in, in the right hemisphere, pulls from all of our emotions first. We feel before we ever think in everything we do. All right. And so then for, it, it creates a generalized assumption based on past experiences of what happened, sends it over to the left. The left then trims it down, and it's supposed to send it back to the right side for a last an emotional sh uh, sifting 
to create the greatest intellect and, and most balanced decision. What's missing in our culture and society, because starting with the church hundreds of years ago, they wouldn't allow science to go to emotions. We're so underdeveloped and uneducated emotionally, and we've promoted this left hemisphere logic, it doesn't get to the right. And that's the lack of common sense, is it's all based in analytical, critical thinking, which is skewed and incorrect. And when you show it that, like, look, I, I blow up COVID. I mean, it's just a disgrace. And, and all that. I knew it back then when it came out. And now all the studies are showing, like, the shots don't work, that Pfizer, you know, the, the medication that was sent to us was only tested on 40 people. And Fauci's duplicity, like all of it. Yeah. But people are going to read that. And, and I warn them, this is what's going to happen. Like I lay out, your brain's going to do this, 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 and this. Like I'm trying to help them see, like I'm going to call you out on all of these things, on transgender and all of these policies. And here's yeah. what your brain is going to say. Like I literally tell you, your brain is going to say and do this. And this is what you want to look for. It's going to say you're crazy. That's a conspiracy. It, this is a bunch of BS. Of, what the hell what are, you are your credentials? The yeah, they're, they're common self-deception. This is the other thing I show in the book. There are 21 techniques that people in self-deception use. That's the CIA has developed. That if you use any combination of these 21 things in the first five seconds, you're in deception. Well, what you'll find out is when you read these, it is, that's what we, that's how we all talk to ourselves. It's how we all behave on a daily basis, minute by minute, having a conversation about oranges. Like it's that ingrained in society, self-deception. Like I'm telling you, I've really like put people in a box. You're just going to go, oh my God, we're all lying nonstop, nonstop over the simplest things. Well, well that's... <laughs> And you're, so you're so right, but the pro, you know, the biggest problem. This is why I say, what's your prediction? The question here is it's like, it's going to be very polarizing. Well, well, because they're going to they they immediately criticize and say, no, 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 no. You're crazy, right? That's the gaslighting. That right there proves that right there that right there proves you're in deception. No, nope. right there, and I show it. I'm like, if this is if you react in these ways. This is your denial. Like this is backed by science, not an opinion. This is how it works. Like, and that, and that's, and that's when and they they'll get double down anyway. Accept, and that's when they get to almost accept it and then go, "This is not science. This is a, this is a, an industry trying to take advantage of me and take my money now." Bingo! You just used two convincing statements on top of each other. Denial. Yep. That's how, right there. That's one of the 21 techniques. Plus, you add that in with your body, the way your body changed, it stopped, it removed its, your anchor points. Those two happened in your response. You're the, sitting across from a CIA agent. They would know you're in deception right there. Like, that's it. That's I mean, you just exhibited two of the 21 traits as you made up a false, you know, a joking around answer. But yeah. your body, this is the thing is, our bodies can't lie. And so your words were lying, but your body couldn't. And so as you're even making it up, you put those two together, and that's <laughs> deception. Like Discomfort, yeah. Right, right there, because you're going, oh, I know. And, and so your body's changing its anchor point. And then to try and convince your body, you use back-to-back -back convincing statements. That's deception. And so that's what I mean. Like the book is going to be polar for those in severe deception. They're just going to go ballistic. They're going to double down. And here's the, what's fascinating about the left hemisphere. This is why you see the explosion of victim identities and, and cancel culture is the left hemisphere, even when shown it's wrong and doubling down on its falseness, it takes it one step further. It flips the script and makes itself the victim. And that's what they'll do. So the ones that aren't ready for this, they'll, you know, they'll, it'll get ugly. The ones that are will be like, oh, my God, I'm set free. So it's a, it, it'll be a very polarizing book. In, and, you know, there will be some in the middle. But, you know, for those who are really far out there and really deceptive, um, it's going to be tough. It's, it's going to... It,
it's going to be a tough read unless you're unless you're just you've had it then you're just going to be like oh my god thank god now i know I knew something was off. Why isn't anyone, you, you, you're going to be overjoyed. You'll be in tears. You'll be like, finally, now I understand. And this, why is anyone, anyone laid this out? I'm curious to see what happens, you know? And, and, and a lot of that depends on will the book take off or not? You know, will people. It seems, but it seems like your prediction is a lot of people are going to get pissed off. That's the first step. Well, I, and that's my projection of my fears. That's my, that's the little child in me who's scared to death that everyone will get pissed. I don't know that that's true. Like I'm, my my saying that see i recognize there's deception in me saying that i have no idea if that's true i this is how emotions work and remember everything out of our mouth is emotion based not thought based every thought starts from an emotion so the origin of that thought comes from my childhood where if i spoke my truth it didn't go well well i'm speaking the truth and so i'm my fears about that are all based on what happened to me as a child. I have no life experience. I just put the book out. So I have no life experience that this is going to go bad. My prediction is how our brain works. Our brain works on predictions. It doesn't work in the present. It works in the past. We create predictions of things based on our childhood trauma history and our, our, most, and our emotional history. And so it's quite possible. Another prediction could be, it blows up as wildly successful. And even those that are in massive deception go, oh my God, this is wonderful. And that's possible too. You know, I, I don't know. Yeah. I, 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 I've tried to approach it from a very loving place and confront that deception without denigrating. You know, because most times when people confront deception, they do it by belittling somebody else. And and that that you, you generally don't no one really wants to, you know, have their deception or their reality challenged from a belittling place. They created the deception because that's what they experienced from their parents. So they're not going to be open to it. You know, I, I feel I did it from a very kind and loving place and and didn't judge or belittle. I just pointed it out, but I also allowed them to stay right where they are and to not have to accept that, you know this reality they and, and if they don't want to it's okay you know it's up to them it's their choice so maybe that's what they've needed is somebody to be loving enough to go it's okay if you're not ready for this it doesn't make you bad mm -hmm. and maybe they'll go maybe that's the the light switch and i, I don't know i mean you know it I make assumptions and predictions based on how the current culture responds to a lot of things, right. you know, and so it would make sense to me, you know, those who are pro COVID, even though there's innumerable facts about what a disaster it was and how wrong it was, it won't matter. Facts won't matter to them yeah. because it confronts their attachment, authenticity bind it confronts their belief system and their denial and they don't want to admit the truth. And that's their low self-esteem. And that's the shame they're trying, they're avoiding experiencing because of what they went. That's all childhood trauma. So any of these topics that they, even though I've laid out the facts, it's, you know, here it is the left hemisphere. I'm showing you, no, you're wrong. Their attachment authenticity bind in the worst day cycle that they're caught in their shame and denial won't allow them to see truth. Well, that, that makes me sad. Like that's heartbreaking, you know, that they're in that much pain. Like a lot of this is political too. The cancel culture warriors are primarily on the political left. And so I show how they're in deception and that they're actually not protecting people, they're hurting people. I show convincingly, like it's not even up for debate. debate. Well, the political right is going to use that against them. And I warn them, do you realize the second you judge, blame, and criticize them for that, you're talking to you. So be very careful about belittling and shaming them. Yeah. Because that's you running from your own. Both serving from, both coming from a deep lack of self-esteem and compassion and empathy for themselves. And it's a detachment from their inherent value and worth, from their authentic selves. They're operating out of the worst day cycle, the shame-based codependent. 
side of things and they're either exercising it from the disempowered place or the falsely empowered place. And so the second you attack them for it, you realize you're not talking to them. You're trying, your authentic self is talking to you, trying to tell you what you need to address. So be Penny, careful that you do from pointing the finger. 